Welcome to this edition of the Commissioner's Report, where today we'll be hearing from Commissioner Ed Smith, who will be bringing us up to date on projects influencing the future of Polk County. And then a little later on, we'll hear from Commissioner Todd Dantzler, who will provide us information on what the county is doing in the very large community of Point Siena in northeastern Polk County. First up is Commissioner Ed Smith. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Mr. De Janeiro. It's a real honor and a privilege to, to be here. Yeah, thank thank you. you. You know, few places are better poised for economic recovery than Polk County. Polk County is at the heart of the 10th largest economic region in the United States. National, regional, and local firms own a, an astonishing 7,000 acres that have been future land use for business park use and those future industrial parks will support up to 25 million uh, square feet of new space coming online in Polk County. It's just absolutely phenomenal. In the meantime, we have several home run projects that are underway or in the planning stages, including the Central Polk Parkway. How do you view our future? Mr. De Janeiro? I gotta tell you just like I see it. The future of Polk County is so bright you have to wear sunglasses. And I can see you're set up for that. <laughs> We're ready to go. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. You know, uh, Agriculture Commissioner um, uh, Adam Putnam stated at a speech I heard him make uh, not too long ago, and he said, you know, Polk County is in the center of everything. And that's mm -hmm. exactly true. As a matter of fact, the comment that you made uh, about Polk County being in the middle of everything is, Really, uh, probably a lot of people don't realize the, that within a 100-mile radius of Polk County, there are 8.9 million people living. So this is a tremendous market that we have right here, and, uh, and we've, we've got everything we need. This, this, is, this is the most attractive area of Polk County, of the state I can see, that any company might want to move to. You're exactly right, Commissioner. You know, we're a humble people in Polk County. We believe that Copernicus, Copernicus and Galileo were wrong. Polk County is the center of the universe. Yes, and it, it's hard to be humble. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's talk <laughs> about one of, one of the important projects that's in the planning stages, the Central Polk Parkway. Mm -hmm. What do you know about that project? Well, the Central Polk Parkway is going to loop down, uh, as a matter of fact, from the um, Polk Parkway, as a matter of fact, as you know, that circles uh, Lakeland. And it will come down south to uh, just north of, uh, of US 60, or State Road 60, I guess it is, and then head back up north to I-4. Um, and this is, this is going to be something we really, really need here. And a lot of folks are saying, well, you know, you're paralleling US 27, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I read figures that said that if we don't do anything right now that by and just continue to to extra lane what we've got that in probably 20 to 25 years us 27 is going to have to be 10 laned uh, to carry the amount of traffic that we're going to have coming through polk county uh, and a lot of that of course is uh, is being boosted by the uh, by the arrival of the csx multimodal or ilc terminal uh, that's lo located just south of winter haven so uh, we, we really need the Central Polk Parkway. Uh, it's a very expensive project, and, and because of that, uh, you know, it's taking some time and funding is going to be an issue, but uh, it is absolutely a needed project. The funding looks like it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood, and this is just a, a guesstimate of about $1.2 billion, and that's with a B. So that's a very expensive project, but again, uh, we actually need it. Yes, sir. You know, probably one of the most visible projects, major projects coming online in the future is actually happening this summer and fall with the opening of the Florida Polytechnic University up on I-4. Uh, visitors to Polk County out on Interstate 4, they're craning their necks and they're looking at this huge, uh, beautiful structure by Calatrava and they're wondering, what is it? Of course, we know it to be the $100 million dollar uh, first building for the Florida Polytechnic. The, the Board of County Commissioners is solidly behind this project. Could you, could you tell us why? Well, actually, uh, you know, I, I personally feel, and I'm certainly not uh, alone in this, that 
Florida Polytechnic University is, is just going to be an absolute game changer for, the, for Polk County uh, and for also for Central Florida and for the state of Florida and, and I hope even for the nation. Um, this, this is going to be just tremendous. Uh, the, the, um, it is the biggest economic project in, in certainly in Polk County's 152 year history. Um, Polk County has made an investment by Polk County government in this project of, uh, of 25 million dollars. Yes, so sir. it's certainly important to us. The city of Lakeland has invested heavily in it and, uh, and it is building. It is going to open in the fall with 500 students. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think they had something like uh, two or three thousand applicants for 500 seats. So there's a great deal of interest. Uh, that build out, it's going to have 625,000 square feet of academic and support facilities and a capital investment of $315 million. That's huge. Yes. That's and, a big and, number. And it is our Sputnik. So uh, we are just looking forward to it. And I, I think it's going to be a game changer, absolutely, for Polk County economically. Uh, I just wish I could come back in about 20 years and see exactly what, what it has meant to Polk County. And I think it's going to be tremendous. There's no, no doubt about it. You know, Commissioner, you, you uh, at the top end of the program, you mentioned the CSX, Integrated Logistics Center. Mm -hmm. It recently opened in Winter Haven. And uh, this is really going to be a game changer for the central and, and southern part of our county, if not in central Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the terminal is on 318 acres. But surrounding that terminal with the three massive cranes for containers, the city of Winter Haven has uh, future land use up to 4,000 acres of business park land. That's really going to be a magnet for development in Central Florida, don't you think? Well, not only that, I've heard figures that uh, you know employment uh, created and generated by that uh, LLC, Integrated Logistics Center, something in the neighborhood of maybe 8,000 jobs will be created. Uh, there is there will be warehousing of course it's going to happen here there's going to be distribution centers that will be originated from there uh, and if we can use as a guide uh, the some of the other ILCs that we've been visiting particularly the one in Texas uh, there there are assembly points located in there so what happens is the piece parts are shipped in by rail they go immediately right to that area and they are assembled right there uh, various products and, and this provides jobs. So we're, we're looking at that really big and that's, that's going to be a big boost for Polk County right there. So uh, an, another great thing is coming. Yes sir, and you as a county commissioner and a leader in our community and me as a granddaddy who has grandbabies, we're both familiar with Legoland Florida and what a shot in the arm Legoland has been to Polk County. Tell us about your experience with Legoland. Uh, my first experience with Legoland is I was very tired after walking around behind a six-year-old and a four-year-old grandchild. Uh, they wore me out, but it is, it is just fascinating and around the turn, every turn is, is something new, something interesting, and, and I never got tired of looking at stuff, but my leg said I was tired. I, you know, you know I'm, I'm uh, tired of that right now. Studies have said that we need more new hotel space in Polk County. Isn't Legoland building a new hotel? That's, cor that's uh, correct. Um, there will be a new hotel, the Legoland Hotel, uh, and uh, it's, it's scheduled to open, I think, uh, very shortly. It's going to uh, begin construction in 2014 and uh, should be finished and opened, I think, by 2015, by next year. So uh, that hotel is uh, scheduled to have 152 rooms that are all going to be Legoland uh, themed and uh, I think uh, they'll have a nice view of Lake Eloise and this, this is going to be another great attraction. I'm, I'm hoping what's going to happen, they're going to have to come back and say, boy, we got to add some rooms, you know, <laughs> we don't have enough here, that the demand will far exceed what the supply is. And uh, so, you know, we want people to spend some time here in Polk County, not just come and get a hotel room and stay in, in Orlando or in Orange County and drive for the day to Polk County. You know, we want them to stay here, we want them to eat in our restaurants, and we have other things besides po uh, the Legoland we want them to look at, you know. Uh, so hopefully they'll, they'll do that and, and start looking around and say, you know, hey, Polk County's a pretty nice place. 
And another pretty okay. nice place and staying with the hospitality theme mm -hmm. is the new Streamsong Resort that has opened on 16,000 acres of mosaic land south of Mulberry near Bartow and Fort Meade. Uh, it has a 216 room resort, two fascinating golf courses. That's a shot in the arm for our community as well. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. I think uh, most people would have looked at that reclaimed and unreclaimed, a matter of fact, phosphate mining land down there and said, boy, this kind of looks like moonscape more than anything else. You can't do anything with this. But boy, have we been proven wrong because they have created an absolute gem down there. People from all over the world, yes, golfing magazines are yes. saying that Streamsong is one of the best golf courses, a matter of fact, too, golf courses in the world, not, not just in the United States or just in Florida and Polk County, they are they are they are world class golf courses, um, and there are two of them, of course, uh, available on site is hunting, horseback riding, hiking, birding, canoeing, fishing. I mean, there's just all kinds of things for people to do. Uh, they have uh, they have uh, spaces there for uh, meetings and for conventions, and and uh, there are I think three or four restaurants located in the hotel. There's a magnificent restaurant located in the in the golf club, clubhouse down there, so it's a it's it's a really thing, a beautiful thing. Um, they debuted and opened on January the 18th of this year, and they opened to full occupancy of the hotel. So it's a it's it's really amazing. The investment there was a hundred million dollars, and it's going to employ 300 people, and uh, 80 percent of the guests. Uh, have reported that check in down there that this is the first time and their first exposure to Polk County. That's amazing. They've never been here before and they said wow you know this is really an interesting place and so that's good. So with the assistance of Mosaic and the other large landowners Polk County has completed a select area study for a 250,000 acre region of former and active phosphate mine lands. Other stuff is going in there and I predicted that. I said, you know, Stream Song, when you look at it, you say, boy, this is isolated. It's really out here in nowhere, but you know what? It's not going to be in the middle of nowhere very long. I can guarantee it. Uh, things are going to develop around Stream Song, and, and we can look for that, and that's, that's going to come. So One of the things that's going to develop, of course, you were there recently, was the groundbreaking for the new Tico $700 million expansion mm -hmm. at the Polk Power Station. That's a real kick in the, uh, the, uh, the arm to Polk County, if you will. Yes, a 460 megawatt addition to mm -hmm. its existing Polk Power Station. And uh, it currently produces 600 or 260 megawatts through, gold gas through coal gasification. Boy, that's easy for me to say and 680 megawatts through natural gas. And uh, so this project is, is going to start this year. Ground has been broken. Um, that's going to be great. The city of Lakeland also is going to be piping its affluent down to them. Uh, millions of gallons daily if it's treated water uh, to supply expanding power plant needs for cooling water. So that's a win-win for everybody yes, too. Exactly. So, so that's that's absolutely amazing that that's going on, and it's all in Polk County. Now it's well that that plant will supply the needs not only for South Polk County, but also a great deal of that is going to be uh, supplying the needs uh, over in Hillsborough County as well. We so. appreciate the time that you spent with us today, Commissioner, talking about these major projects. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. A pleasure to be with you. Well, thank you. And please stay with us in a few minutes. We'll, uh, we'll bring you Commissioner Todd Dantzler, who's going to bring us up to date on what's happening in the beautiful community of Point Siena. Thank you. Don't we all agree? We desperately need the bridge. No way. No bridge. It'll lower the value of my property. The bridge will help get our kids to school with less danger, quicker, and back home before dark. Crime, riffraff, smog, and pollution? Noise is what the bridge will bring. Nobody agrees with you. You're out of touch. Listen, everyone I know is against the bridge. In a nation that's supposed to be united, it's sometimes hard to imagine that we don't always all agree.
Everyone wants the bridge. No one wants the bridge. My legislator better vote right. American democracy. Don't we all agree? Learn how you can make American democracy stronger. Log on to www.representativedemocracy.org. Hey, Ma. I got the job. I've got the job. Welcome aboard. I've got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Donate to Goodwill. Help provide job training in your community. Welcome back to the Commissioner's Report, where, where, where we are now joined by Commissioner Todd Dantzler, who's going to speak to us about uh, projects that are going on in Point Siena in the northern, northeastern part of Polk County. Welcome to the show, Commissioner. Thank you, Larry. It's good to be here. <laughs> hey, I have a brother named Larry. He's a funny guy. You know, Point Siena is an amazing place, stretching over 42,000 acres in an area that's 19 miles long by about nine miles wide. It's located in both Polk and Osceola counties, as you know, and the Association of Point Siena Villages claims to be the largest homeowners association in the United States with about 26,000 dwelling units. The Board of County Commissioners is actively building product projects in Point Siena and nearby to support the growth in the northeast part of our uh, county, which is larger than the state of Rhode Island. Two of the biggest priorities uh, for Polk County residents of Point Siena are the new fire rescue station and the expansion of their new community park. Let's start off, Commissioner, if we may, with plans for the new fire station. What can you tell us about that project? Okay, this is uh, planned in the Village 7 areas, the Lake Marion Creek project. And um, we have just received a land donation from AV Homes of approximately 10 acres, just under 10 acres. And that's for the future site of, or that's the site for our future fire station. We've got some extra land to put a tower if we need to uh, improve the emergency communications in that area. And that's all coming because of a deal that we struck with AV Homes, the old avatar. Um, and doing the deal for the Point Siena Parkway. That was part of their responsibility. They, they had donated a lot of uh, land uh, right of way for the project. Uh, the, city, the, the county is improving Kenny Harmon Boulevard and US 1792. Uh, that's what our contribution is. Osceola County is going to build it through the Osceola County Expressway Authority. Uh, but that's the 10 acres that's going to be down in the Village 7 area that services that part of the community. And how are we going to fund this, this operation? Well, that's the question. Okay, um, yes, this, is the, this station is the number one priority for fire okay. rescue, according to Chief Cash. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where we're going to be putting our efforts. Um, we have money in an account to build it through our impact fees, our EMS impact fees, to build the station. But we don't have reoccurring dollars set aside to take care of the manning of the station. Um, we have applied, um, or we are, we are in the process of applying for a SAFER grant, okay. which is staffing for adequate fire emergency response. Uh, this is a federal grant and they will pay 100% of the manpower cost for two years. If we don't have a plan to then take over and start funding those same firefighters and EMS rescue, then we have to pay that grant back. It costs us approximately a million dollars a year okay. to staff a fire station with, a, with EMS as well. Okay, so it's interesting, even though a, um, a landowner or a corporation may donate land to the county, for a fire station, that doesn't mean that we're immediately going to get one built. That's correct. Yeah, it's the reoccurring yeah. dollars that's yes. the struggle right now in the in the budget process because yeah. of uh, the diminished property values. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a fire fee that we charge, um, and I think we put that on a couple years ago. Uh, that is not adequate with today's population and growth uh, to fund another fire. To, to man another fire station. Yes, so that's a tap dance that we're trying to figure out how to get that done. A lot of energy has been put forward in that respect through uh, community activists, through county staff, through the fire rescue team under Chief Cash. Um, so believe me, we know that there's a need there. Uh, and part of the need was 
uh, prompted by our ISO rating, which went, I think, from a 10 to a 5 in that area. I might have it backwards, and there was nothing that we did. It was nothing that the residents did. It's just a bureaucratic organization in Washington said, you now have to be within X number of miles of a fire station, X number of feet of a fire hydrant, and that's an age of the house and roofs and some of the other things is how the ISO rating comes about. So it's nothing that anybody did, it's just someone in Washington said we're going to change it and it, people's insurance just went through the roof. And you know that's untenable, so we're trying to find a solution, we're working very hard. It's not a quick process. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Commissioner Lindsay and uh, County Attorney Freeman and County, uh, excuse me, County Attorney Craig and County Manager Freeman, we were in D.C. and we were lobbying for this safer grant. We met with all the congressmen and we met with uh, Senator Rubio's staff and we met with Senator Nelson. We told them the need wow. so they hear okay. us and um, Congressman Grayson is on board with doing whatever he can on the Democratic side uh, working with the White House. So we've got a lot of energy. It's not going to happen fast. Um, if we decide to pull the plug today and say we're going forward, uh, Chief Cash has told me we're still probably two years away from opening the station. So okay. it's not a short process, but we're working hard to make it happen. Well, appreciate your help. You know, Absolutely. in Polk County, we are extremely blessed to have one of the finest fire rescue teams in the state, if not the nation. So thank you for that. Let's move on a minute, Commissioner, to another priority for Point Siena and that is the recreation park there. It seemed like just yesterday we were at the groundbreaking for this park uh, and now we're already into phase two. What can you tell us about uh, what's going on at the park? It's a good question, Bob. Yep. And phase one, um, we, we budgeted and spent about $5.4 million, $5 million building phase one. It's got a recreation area, concession stand, three multi-purpose soccer, football fields, um, two baseball, softball fields, a dog park, and basketball, outside basketball. Uh, phase two has begun. Its completion is set for midsummer, and at the end of that, we will have two additional softball fields, a convenience restroom, um, and like a league office area where people can meet. Um, we are opening today's April 24th. Happy birthday, Mom. Um, hey. It's my mom's birthday. Hey. And, Happy uh, birthday, Mom. That's right, <laughs> Mama. So Saturday, this Saturday, yeah. April 26th, they're doing a dedication and grand opening of some cricket fields. And, mm -hmm. you know, cricket is a different dynamic and different dimension than just using a soccer field or a football field. They take up two fields. It's a different, it's a circle. And so by the time this is all done, Polk County will have allocated $7.5 million for the Village 7 Park for Point Siena. And um, we were there for the for the ribbon cutting, I think summer of last yeah. year. And I think they had 400 folks that came out. And it's a great partnership between the county and Point Siena. The county built it, the APV, um, they're responsible for the day-to-day -day maintenance oh, of the park. So right, they good. help stretch our dollars a little bit farther. And so it's been a good relationship. Um, you know, I know we can't do everything. We're doing the best that we can under the budget constraints that we have. So a lot of energy has been spent in the Point Siena area. Fantastic news for that growing Absolutely. community. Before we leave Point Siena, could you give us a brief update on what's happening with the Point Siena Parkway? Uh, the Point Siena Parkway, we just um, completed selling of the bonds. I think last week I signed, uh, my name must have been 150 times uh, authorizing the bonds they were sold I think last week that's what triggered us getting the 10 acres for the fire station um, we had a groundbreaking in the late fall um, more of a ceremonial than anything else with uh, Osceola County officials state officials Polk County officials and so the real work's just getting ready to get started and didn't we contribute uh, millions of dollars towards that, Polk that, that County, effort? Yeah. Polk County's contribution was $6 million, okay. $3 million from impact fees, and DOT had three, as, uh, doing $3 million uh, on the Polk side. So we have a $6 million commitment, and our area is where Kenny Harmon Road uh, connects to 1792. We will be doing some of the road on Kenny Harmon, and the DOT will be doing the intersection improvement. So that's our commitment. Um, the Osceola County Expressway Authority is selling bonds. It's going to be a toll road. Um, they're still doing studies on that. Avatar, AV Homes has contributed the right-of-ways, which is a huge contribution. I think the total price all in is going to be 150 to $175 that's, million. That's dollars. a big number. Yeah. Um, you know, part of it is going through a low area, and so we had permits in place, and we're trying to get the road built before those permits expire. 
let's leave Point Siena sure. now and move away and, and talk about the, what you and your colleagues on the Board of County Commissioners recently uh, assisted the Polk County Sheriff's Office by transferring some funds from their aircraft reserves so that a new helicopter could be purchased. Tell us about that need, please. Okay, last year we authorized the sheriff to uh, buy a new helicopter. Right now we've been operating with a 1971 helicopter and a 1972 helicopter. Oh These goodness. helicopters <laughs> are 40 years old. Oh boy. And we had an incident a couple of weeks ago where luckily there was no civilians involved. Uh, the sheriff's uh, pilot lost power. He was able to find a safe place to sit down and he flared it and sat down safely. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Yeah, and um, under the contract when we purchased the helicopter last year, um, we had a, a clause in there, the sheriff had a clause in there that we had the right to buy another helicopter at the same price before I think the fall of this year. So the sheriff has been setting aside money year after year to put money into replacement funds. So this, there's not new money coming out, the tax is not going up, but we're gonna have two brand new helicopters. They run I think 60 miles an hour faster. They can stay in the air another 45 to 50 minutes. So it's a much more efficient, much faster, probably a much greater level of service than we have with the two. One of the helicopters we've been using from the city of Lakeland. They, uh, they had a helicopter, they took it out of service, we use it. We've been cannibalizing parks, parks all over the country to get down here to use it. No one there. knows Poe County like a helicopter pilot. Absolutely. They see everything that goes on. Absolutely, it's a great ride right. and, mm -hmm. and you do get a different perspective of where things are and um, when people have issues, you can say, hey, I need to do this. Now, we don't get up and go in the helicopter very often, but um, the sheriff's department, there's time when they need to be in the air looking for survivors, looking for bad guys, mm -hmm. looking, for bad guys yeah. looking for good guys, looking for wreck victims. So, I mean, it's important that we have this and it's such a large county. Um, I think we're bigger than two states. It, it's, mm -hmm. it, there's a definite need. Uh, we have a plane that's like a four-seater single engine and uh, I think that was confiscated from drug from a drug runner. So, you know, the sheriff does an outstanding job with our tax dollars and we work hand in hand with him to try and provide the best amount of public safety that we can for the money that we have. Sure he does and thank Absolutely. you. You know, we have a special treat for our viewers today. Uh, it's career day in Polk County for the Board of County Commissioners and you have a special guest you would like to introduce. Thank you. Us. We have uh, Jack Petter here with us today and uh, Jack is here on career day. Pulled him out of the group to come and talk to us and tell us a little bit about yourself. How old are you? Uh, I'm 11 years old. Nice. And what do you want to do when you get out of college and well, as a grown up? Well, I was thinking maybe go into the military, maybe a police officer in the SWAT team. Wow, we'd be lucky to have you. Um, you saw some things out front earlier before I got you with a fire engine, ambulance, and a crawler that cleans out ditches. What was your favorite thing that you saw? Uh, so I like the crawler when it like stood up and spun around. And kind of looked like a transformer? Yeah. Do you see it when it was spinning around to hit the stop sign? Yeah. Luckily no one was hurt though, right? Yeah. All right. So we got a good day planned for this afternoon. I'm looking forward to hanging with you. Hey, Jack, what school do you go to? Uh, All Saints. Ah, excellent school. Well, this is your host, Larry, Bob, George, Jimmy DeGennaro, reminding you to tune in to us next month where we'll have two more commissioners talk about the important projects and priority uh, here in Polk County. Until then, I urge you all to please take care and enjoy this beautiful community we call home.